Hi, I'm Ralph Rivas and this is Rappler Talk. Ngayon ay pag-uusapan natin ang mga pangarap at ambisyon ng mga Pilipino at kung ano-ano na nga ba ang ginagawa ng gobyerno para matugunan ang kanilang mga pangangailangan. Kasama natin ngayon si Socio-Economic Planning Secretary Ernesto Pernia para talakayin yan. Hi, Sec. So, uh, Sec, yung uh, mga pangarap, yung mga ambisyon ng mga Pilipino is uh, encapsulated under uh, ambition natin 2040. So, yeah. can you tell us more about that? Yeah, yung uh, ambition natin 2040 ay uh, resultado yun ng ano, galing yun ng survey of 10,000 Filipinos, uh, I think 18 years and above, mm -hmm. uh, all over the country, random sample. I mean, uh, representing uh, most of the regions. And uh, yung mga tanong dyan ay about ano nga, yung mga pangarap nila, Anong gusto nila ngayon? Anong gusto nila sa sa in the future? So, yun ang mga ang mga sagot nila nasa ambition natin. Mm -hmm. And the, and the uh, the policies of the government are uh, somewhat guided or strongly guided by those ambitions? Yes, because the we have this 20 uh, Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022. Uh, which is anchored on the zero to ten points socio socio-economic agenda of President Duterte. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you have heard about the mm -hmm. zero to ten points so socio-economic agenda. Mm -hmm. So anchored on this uh, zero to ten uh, points socio-economic agenda, and uh, it is uh, geared towards achieving or attaining the. Uh, ambition natin 2040. Mm. Okay, so sir, uh, bibilisan ko lang sir, no, uh, kasi dito sa ambition natin 2040, majority of Filipinos or uh, over 70% said that they want a simple and comfortable life. And then, nakalagay dito, nakadefine din kung ano yung simple and comfortable life. Let's say, uh, 62% own one car. Uh, 61% said they have enough money for day-to-day -day needs. 61% own a medium-sized home. 73% earning enough. And also, uh, children are uh, college-educated. 30% said they are business owners. 30% uh, say that they want to relax with family and friends. And 21% are able to take occasional trips around the country. So, uh, sir, uh, these numbers, sir, can you explain? Yeah. Ang uh, that, uh, those uh, pangarap's na yon ay masummarize uh, sa isang sentence. Mm -hmm. Ang Filipinos ang uh, vision nila, ang ambition natin for 2040 is a uh, life that is uh, that w where they have ano, mayroon silang strong bonds with family and friends. Mm -hmm. They have a comfortable lifestyle and they have a secure future. So they're not they're not uh, really aiming to go for the lavish lifestyle no hindi hindi ko lang parang modest nga modest ang ano pangarap nila sa lifestyle at saka comfortable and secure which is uh, you know i think what everybody would uh, desire uh, mm -hmm. uh. can you walk us through kasi nakalagay dito 62% own one car ah, okay. yun yung ano nila so gusto ba natin yun, Sek? Kasi kung lahat may kotse, <laughs> edi sobrang traffic na lalo dito sa... Siguro ano yun, parang uh, dream nga or pangarap, aspiration. Uh, pero ay, ang ano ko dyan, ang interpretation ko dyan ay ang gusto nila na yung mobility, physical mobility nila moving from one place to the other, from work, uh, from home to work, and then to places that they want to visit And uh, as uh, mentioned also in the uh, in, in what you said, na gusto nilang to be able to have some to do some tour, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some kind of holiday, you know, somewhere. Mm -hmm. So yun ang mobility. Uh, so it's not really the car. They hindi want to siguro be... ni, hindi siguro the car. Kasi ang ang, ang ano ko dyan, ang uh, itong survey na ito was taken sa 2015. When uh, I think in 2015, wala pang wala pang encouraging sign signs of improving infrastructure. Ngayon, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, they're you know they're quite uh, important signs of uh, improving infrastructure. Uh, siguro naman ang ano ang at saka ang emphasis ng government ngayon ay ano 
mass transport ma- mass transportation system kaya nga i think it's not a good idea that everybody will be or the majority will be earn the mm-hmm. owning a car kasi you know it's just you know it will just uh, worsen congestion and the pollution and the kinds of problems we have now mm-hmm. so it's really mass transportation mm-hmm. that will allow mobility uh, And then I'd like to add din, no, sa nakalagay din dito na 30% actually prefer to live in a big city like Manila. So what about that, Sek? Uh, is that ideal that, uh, you know, uh, 30% of the population? No. Again, I, I think it's because uh, most of the services, the uh, social, health, and education services are available in Metro Manila. But then... Uh, These are also available in other metropolitan areas like Davao, Cagayan de Oro, Cebu, and uh, even uh, maybe uh, Central Luzon. No? Mayroon namang mga, ano doon, mga malaking lugar. At saka, uh, ang, impo- ang importante dyan, kasi ang hinanap ta- talaga ng mga Pilipinos ay ano, opportunities. Mm-hmm. Opportunities for education, health, better health care, And then, uh, no entertainment, uh, work uh, opportunities, and um, such things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yung etong etong sa etong lumabas sa survey na to, how is the government uh, using th- this information to uh, shape policies and uh, do their pro do programs? Yeah. If you go through our Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022, most of this. Uh, most if not all even beyond uh, whatever have been mentioned by uh, respondents sa uh, ambition natin 2040 na nasa pan naka spell out yun sa ano sa mga how many chapters mga 20 chapters mm-hmm. sa Philippine Development Plan ang uh, ang PDP 2017 2022 ay pinaka pinaka rich na medium term plan Uh, kasi hindi lang sa uh, ek- economy yung ano mga chapters diyan mayroon din na uh, chapters on culture mm-hmm. on science and technology promotion on uh, uh, speedy and uh, fair admis- and uh, delivery of justice mm-hmm. so talagang ano uh, all aspects of development economic development uh, as well as non-economic uh, aspects of development nandiyan sa ano PDP Mm-hmm. And they re- all relate to the ambition nothing as well as as well as to the you know, uh, sustainable development goals uh, 2030 mm-hmm. yung sa UN. No? And then so I guess yung Philippine Development Plan is there to uh, to serve as guide to any administration kasi uh, six years lang yung kada president and each president has their own uh, you know goals their own visions right. and uh, this plan uh, somewhat and uh, parang It serves as their guide. That's right. right. It's, a it's, a mm, it's, it's a blueprint. It's a blueprint. It's a map uh, in terms of the six-year term of an administration. And uh, if you look at uh, the the objective of the main objective of the Philippine Development Plan, uh, the current one, is to lay to lay the foundation for inclusive growth, a high trust and uh, resilient society and a globally competitive knowledge economy. Mm-hmm. Ang importante dyan ay we are trying to nurture a high trust society. Kasi essentially, kulang yata tayo ng trust. Mm-hmm. Uh, people vis-a-vis government, as well as people vis-a-vis even the uh, business sector, no? At saka, among ourselves. We have, we have, I think we have little trust. We want to, ano, uh, to develop uh, this high trust para naman na, ano, that will also uh, benefit the next administration kasi if we have a, if the next administration has, has a, is trusting on the previous administration they'll continue mm-hmm. what uh, we would have uh, started or what the, uh, they will build on the foundations mm-hmm. na pinag layout ng current administration okay so i get that we have this blueprint para hindi personality based yung Uh, yung mag, yung magiging actions ng government sec no pero yeah. how uh, how bound are uh, governments in, in the succeeding governments in uh, following this plan 
There's no one to bind them. Mm. Kasi ang next administration will be independent of the previous one. Wala namang uh, overall policeman that would uh, enforce mm. uh, na they, that they will continue what uh, the previous administration has uh, started. Uh, so, it's kwan nga. Kailangan na kung may, ma, 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 ma enhance natin ang trust among ourselves, among uh, fellow, fellow Filipinos, among citizens uh, vis-a-vis government, mm-hmm. then uh, ano, the likelihood of uh, the next administration continuing what uh, this administration has uh, laid out would be higher, I think. Mm-hmm. The, the, probabil- the likelihood, yes, the probability. Yeah. Okay, so you're under, uh, you're under the cabinet of uh, President Duterte. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's talk about poverty reduction first. Uh, yung goals of the this administration is to uh, have uh, poverty reduced at what level by 2022? Yeah, ang poverty incidence natin noong uh, 2015, kasi yung family income and expenditure survey ginagawa yun every three three years. Mm-hmm. Eh. So the latest would be 2018. Ang uh, Ang ano namin, ang objective namin ng this administration is to bring down poverty to 14% by the end of this administration. Mm. So families, Filipino uh, poverty, poverty incidence among Filipino families, yun sir. Yes. The 14%. Um, no, among uh, among Filipinos in ah, general, ah, okay. among the population, mm. yung family uh, poverty incidence is uh, lower na. Eh. So already mm. about 16%. 16.1 Six, as of uh, the first half of 2018. Yeah, yeah, it's already, it's already lower. So Filipino... Pero mas mataas kasi yung, kung if you uh, look at the population in general. Mm. Mm. Well, sir, sabi dito, uh, it's at 21%. So from 21 all the way to 14% by 2022. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we started in 2016. Mm. So, uh, you know... Of course, we have already uh, passed uh, what uh, three years, no more than three years na ngayon. So we have uh, no less than three years to uh, to achieve our goal. But so kailangan talagang ano uh, to speed up economic growth, uh, sustain as as uh, in fact accelerate economic growth. At saka we also need to uh, improve the implementation or. Uh, intensified the implementation of the RPR, its law, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, providing effective modern family planning services to mm-hmm. to people, uh, especially especially the lower income, who tend to have uh, big, uh, more children than they want. Because if we lessen the number uh, number of children of uh, uh, poorer Filipinos, then that in itself will, will, will reduce poverty incidence. Mm. There will be fewer poor people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, you're confident that uh, you'll hit that target based on uh, what's happening right now, uh, the pace? Yeah, we will know, we will know by, uh, I think by next month. Or, the, or yeah, maybe, yeah, next month, uh, November, uh, the uh, poverty incidence number for the full year 2018. Mm. Yeah. Kasi hindi pa lumabas yun. Ang lumabas lang yun sa first semester. So, uh, yeah, uh, bumaba. I, I, I guess you were very happy with yeah, the results. Yeah, bumaba from 27 ano. to 21. Mm. Yeah, I remember those numbers. Mm. But uh, ang usually kasi yung, ano, yung second semester tend to be ano, lower poverty kasi people have more incomes. Yeah, yeah uh, poverty is down. Pero uh, the uh, GDP growth is actually uh, yun yung issue ngayon lately uh, because of the global uh, uh, slowdown na apektuhan din yung Pilipinas. So how do we uh, how do we shield ourselves from those? That's uh, true. Uh, actually, there are two causes, uh, not only the global slowdown or the trade tensions between the U.S. and China. We also were set back by the, you know, by the delay in the uh, enactment of the 2019 budget. We lost about six months already. Six mm-hmm. months. And uh, Kasi uh, kung, kung ano pa, kung na-approve pa yung budget natin 2019 on time, in other words, uh, if it took effect in January, on January 1, 2019, then we should have uh, achieved in the first semester around 6.6 6 
6.5 or 6.6 percent growth rate. Mm. But instead, we we have only about we only grew 5.5 percent mm. average for the mm. first semester. So, so malaking sec, malaking impact talaga yun mm. ano. So sec, uh, the World Bank, IMF, ADB, they were all they all slashed their growth outlooks na for this year. Um, it's gonna be uh, below 6% percent though. So, yeah, actually, it's happen? not just for the Philippines. It's for most countries. I think practically all countries, mm. and also for the global economy. Mm. I think it used to be 3.9 percent growth rate for the global economy. Then they brought it down to 3.6. It's now 3.2 mm. for the global economy. So it's not uh, the uh, Philippines is not an exception. Mm. Uh, yeah. So uh, what about next year? Uh, mukhang uh, struggle pa rin next year if the trade war continues. So uh, how 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 do we adapt to this? Well, I think uh, I think uh, there is uh, some there are some signs that you know, that uh, President Trump is uh, softening on his stance uh, vis-a-vis you know China. Mm-hmm. So that's encouraging. So which which would mean that uh, growth rates would pick up would, would kick up uh, no, next year. From a lower lower base. So, so this uh, slowdown for uh, 2019. Do you see this as a uh, setback or uh, something na mahakahinder in achieving the uh, you know uh, the goals of uh, the ambition natin 2040 and uh, you know the medium term goals of this administration? Yeah, inevitably, basta ano ma, mas mababa yung growth rate kasi sa target natin. Uh, yeah, a, cert, a certain uh, you know certain sub targets or sub goals would be ano would be affected. So, sec, uh, you're still maintaining the target, baser, of at least six percent this year, or have you uh, revised that? Well, we are still keeping at uh, 6%, six percent, six six to six point five percent. In fact, six six. 6% to 7 yata ang, ano, mm. ang uh, uh, growth range target namin. And then for the next year, I think it's at, uh, higher, 6.5? 6.5 to 7.5. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you're retaining for that so far? Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Right. Okay, so uh, another issue, sir, uh, on pover- uh, regarding sa poverty incidents pa rin sec, no, is the agriculture sector. Uh, it's still struggling until now. So... Um, Anong ano masasabi niyo sec uh, in this uh, ano ano pang mga kailangan natin? Yeah, yung agriculture has been ano has been uh, uh, has been ha- set back or hampered by uh, weather w- weather disturbances, uh, El Nino and typhoons. At the same time, uh, uh, you know, we we need ano uh, we need to improve our the way we are running agriculture mm-hmm. and uh, we think that we should be able to achieve uh, we were achieving less than one percent growth rate eh? mm-hmm. so we need to achieve at least two percent even more we could achieve uh, three or four uh, percent growth rate in agriculture so sec you're still uh, advocating to uh to improve the agriculture sector but they are already uh, you know uh those saying that uh, the Philippines is not really good in agriculture, so might as well move on to other sectors. Ano well, well, what, what, what we are uh, what we are uh, encouraging now is uh, well to improve our agricultural productivity. We are not aiming for rice self-sufficiency, for example. We are aiming for food security, and uh, so just uh, try to improve up agricultural productivity. And then uh, diversify our crops mm-hmm. from too much uh, emphasis on rice to other uh, to uh, other crops that are even higher value mm-hmm. than rice. Uh-huh. So, sec, uh, you mentioned rice. So, do you think that the rice tarification uh, law is uh, ano ba, uh, living up to its promises so far? Uh, it's it has worked uh, wonders so far. Because it brought down inflation from 6.7 in last year, September and October last year, it's now down to the, the latest number was uh, 0.9 mm-hmm. percent, less, oh, mm-hmm. less than one percent, and uh, which means that uh, that has really stimulated uh, consumption spending, mm-hmm. household consumption spending, which accounts for about uh, 70 to 75 percent of GDP. Mm-hmm. Pero sektalo naman yung farmers. Sobrang baba ng farm gate. 
prices? Uh, well, uh, that's a, that's a, no, that's an adjustment problem because short-term adjustment problem. How short-term is this, sir? Because uh, well, sa field, yung, yung pumunta ako sa field talagang hindi pa kasi na distribute yung ano eh, na fully distribute yung RCEF, mm -hmm. Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Kung ma fully distributed na yon at saka ma magamit na ng mga farmers, I think uh, things will be will uh, look better for them. Okay, we'll so Sec, yeah. Sec, let me push you a little more on the issue, sir. No, uh, do you think uh, these are birth pains or may problema talaga sa implementation on rice tarification? These are birth pains. The teething, uh, birth pains and teething problems. Mm. I, I I would say, because uh, I've I've been saying that uh, let us let it play out muna for at least a year before you know saying that you know there's a problem. Maybe for a year and then after for a that. year or two years, yeah. Because mm. uh, it's a it was a major, it was a major structural change sa rice sector talaga, yung pag ano, yung uh, tarification. Yeah. Ako sir, uh, I'm just curious lang, how would you explain that to a farmer? Sec na birth pains lang yun, yung mga nangyayari ngayon. Anong, an, saan sila pwedeng pumunta? Sabihin ko, of, uh, pareho lang yun ng, ano, ng asawa mo, yung misis mo, mga anak siya. Mahirapan naman in the first, what? In the first year siguro, di ba? Mag, ano, to recover from, ano, from the, uh, from the, uh, from the difficulties of pregnancy and then the delivery and then especially kung cesarean ano, section, ganun talaga. Then in the second year, things will, uh, things will become more normal for the family. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So that's a, no, that's a very uh, mm -hmm. graphic mm -hmm. uh, example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sek, uh, I understand this government is also, uh, you know, talagang uh, pinapakita nila, uh, pinapakita ninyo na you really want more infrastructure under Duterte, the Duterte administration. Right, yeah. So, uh, kumusta yung, uh, can you give us an update on the infrastructure projects, Sek? Well, uh, of the 75 uh, so-called flagship projects, uh, 37 have already been uh, processed and approved by the NEDA board. Mm -hmm. But there are certain projects that are difficult to pursue because of uh, cost uh, implications, the, the terrain or, the, uh, or the, the depth of the sea. Uh, over which uh, a bridge would be built. Uh, can you specify which, which project this one is? Uh, uh, the, uh, the bridge uh, connecting uh, Matnog Sorsogon to Allen Samar. Mm. It's not only a long bridge, but it's, the, the, the waters are really very deep. So it's not the financing or anything, it's more it's of It's also that. the financing, it's going to be m much more expensive than we mm. thought. Also, the one that uh, is supposed to connect uh, later to Surigao. Mm -hmm. Ma -ma uh, it's too challenging. Yung ano. So these challenges are uh, ano ba, more... Uh, is this a financial problem or uh, ano ba to, implementation? It's an engineering. It's mm -hmm. an engineering uh, you know, construction problem. Really. Mm -hmm. So what do you do there? Shelved or... Uh, well, uh, it can be it can be taken up again uh, uh, in the uh, up in the next administrations. Uh, they just uh, at least they will know by now that uh, they really they really have to uh, spend more and uh, no, make sure that uh, you know they can uh, you know cope with the challenge. Mm. The, uh, the engineering there has to be some engineering solution that uh, no. How many projects are we talking about? Uh, sec, kasi, uh, I under, there, there are 75, diba, sec? So, uh, are you saying that uh, you're uh, tweaking the numbers or kung ilan na lang yung... No, we are, no, we are reviewing the 75. Uh, well, the, the, those that have not been approved by the NEDA board yet, mm -hmm. the balance of uh, about, you know, the, the, the 75 minus 37, uh, we, are, we are reviewing them and uh, we will... Uh, the, well, first of all, besides, this, besides uh, the 75 flagship projects, we have several ad other projects, smaller projects, but uh, 
critical in terms of regional development, mm -hmm. rural development, mostly bridges, provincial development, bridges, uh, roads, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, tourism uh, access to tourism sites, you know. So we are, we have, we, are, we those projects were also in our in our bigger list. Because uh, infrastructure projects, uh, we had a list of about 4,000, 4,980 mm. something. And so, uh, so there are many other projects that we can, we can really finish. And we can, you know, and we can even improve the development of the regions. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Sec, uh, all these infrastructure projects, uh, nung pumasok kayo dito sa NEDA, uh, with President Duterte, uh, did you expect the pace na magiging ganito, or uh, did you have to adjust expectations? Uh, well, like half, you know, the, usually the human nature, or uh, we we yeah. tend to, you know, in general, te people tend to be ambitious mm -hmm. at the start. So, you know, uh, then a long list of uh, undertakings to be carried out, then. Uh, as we go along, uh, we find out that uh, there are stumbling blocks, there are hindrances, there are constraints to carrying them out. So yeah. that's that's the usual occurrence mm -hmm. in the nature of things. You know. So what about the uh, financing scheme uh, from PPP to ODA? Are you thinking of uh, shifting other projects back to PPP since uh, yeah. my, my issues then on ODA? We we actually actually we have a number of uh, PPP projects, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, you know, among b big ticket projects. There are PPP jan. I think of the seventy five the initial seventy five list. I think about what maybe uh, nine nine uh, were PPP projects or hybrid mm -hmm. uh, ODA or government uh, budget and uh, PPP. Mm -hmm. Like the Clark International Airport is a mm -hmm. hybrid uh, government uh, funded project and ODA for, I'm, not, I'm sorry, PPP for O&M, mm -hmm. uh, government for construction of the terminal building, the new terminal building and the, the ma operation, operation maintenance is in a private sector. Mm -hmm. And that's also happening in Bohol. Uh, JICA funded yung ano yung airport doon uh, PPP yung ano yung operation and maintenance. But sec, uh, the, the infra projects uh, mga ilang do you have a figure like ilang percent yung sa tingin mong uusad under this term and which ones ko uh, ilang percent yung I think kailangan pag-isipan na lang ng next administration. Actually, uh, our new list is, uh, I think, it's going to hit 90, 90 projects. So from 75 to 90. To 90, but uh, we, as I've said, we have, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, reviewed our 75, and we have taken out uh, things that are, uh, you know, very challenging, and we have put in other projects that are more uh, fin finishable and also either finishable or can be started mm -hmm. and then to, uh, to be continued by the next administration. So it's about 91 so far. And uh, I, I would think that easily 50% of that, 50%, so 45, maybe 50. 45 to 50, tapos. 45 to 50. Under tapos or uh, to completely finished or uh, nag roll out? Uh, I would say, Finished or nearly finished, mm. yeah, fifty percent. So, can you disclose some of the new projects since nandito na tayo? Well, the uh, the uh, Bohol uh, Panglao International Airport that was not in the list. Mm. Also, the Skyway Stage Three was it's, it was uh, processed during the previous administration, but we, when we came in, uh, it was barely started. Mm. mga siguro five percent lang ang ano accomplishment mm -hmm. so that's that's a major project You're connecting uh, SLEX and NLEX no? mm -hmm. and then the Harbor Link project uh, and then uh, the yeah, north-south commuter railway from Manila to Clark and then from Manila to Calamba 
yeah, those those are included now. And uh, I think the uh, what bridge is that in in Mindanao? The you know there's a bridge. There's also a, a bridge pala connecting Cebu and uh, the main, mainland Cebu with man, with uh, the airport mm -hmm. uh, Lapu Lapu. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah about. Yeah, there's another, uh, and also the there's a port project in you know, in Cebu, so mm. it's 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 quite a num it's it's still quite a number of projects, mm. and uh, qu quite quite high impact projects. Mm. Uh -huh. So railways, uh, any update? Uh, on railways, uh, one is the Clark to Subic mm. railway. The one uh, in Mindanao sec. In Mindanao also the. Uh, it's pushing through. No, it's uh, the first segment of the mm -hmm. Mindanao uh, circumfer circumferential railway, mm -hmm. which uh, is Digos Davao Tagum connect, uh, connect uh, segment of the uh, of the railway, and then uh, then, then the uh, no, uh, the Manila to Bicol, Mani uh, long haul mm -hmm. uh, south uh, long haul. Uh, railway project. Mm -hmm. So tying all these projects back to our main uh, topic, which is ambition natin. Well, what's the big picture? Sec uh, connectivity. Ano ba to? Uh, reshaping. Ko ano yung ambitions ng Filipinos? Or well, connectivity uh, and connectivity is very important in uh, you know uh, people uh, being able to take advantage of employment opportunities in agriculture, in social services in uh, other areas uh, in industrial areas you know? and also uh, it will also encourage it will incentivize industries to set up mm -hmm. in places where there is connectivity mm -hmm. yeah. going back to dun sa infrastructure na ano uh, you mentioned also earlier that uh, the government had a struggle in uh, implementing the projects because of the budget impasse um, and the, here, uh, the DBM said that capital outlays was down 6.5% year-on-year to uh, 74.7 billion pesos in August. Mm -hmm. And then uh, capital outlays also dropped 13% annually. Mm -hmm. So uh, what can you say about that, sir? Uh, well, uh, I, think that is, uh, I think that is a carryover effect from the you know, low spending in the first semester. And you know, in the in the second semester, the climate for construction was not as favorable as the first semester. So that, that is why I think that is what uh, happened. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, papan natin may iwasan yung mga ganong uh, hiccups, sir. Kasi this was uh, you had you had the, you had plans already, and then. Uh, this uh, well, uh, we just uh, we're just we just want to uh, you know encourage uh, the administration. I think wants to encourage the legislature that they will pass uh, annual budgets on time. Important mm -hmm. na approved by December at the latest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Okay, ambition natin 2040, uh, hindi pa pala natin ang pag-uusapan, Sek, no? What's the, by 2040, ano dapat yung nakikita na natin sa Philippines? Uh, ano nga, yung, it will, there will be, uh, the uh, Filipinos will largely be middle income families, middle income. Uh, and then, uh, the life will be more comfortable, more secure more peaceful, uh, Filipinos will be a trusting society among themselves as well as uh, among institutions. And then uh, uh, the, the, the way it's summarized is matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay para sa lahat. Mm -hmm. So that's, those, that's the Tagalog uh, may, translation. May mas ano pa ba sir? Uh, kasi Filipinos always want to compare uh, Always want to compare. For instance, uh, by 2040, will be will we be somewhat like I don't know Singapore or Hong Kong or even more than we that? We will be in terms of uh, per capita 
gross national income will be similar to Malaysia. Because mm -hmm. Malaysia now has about 12,000 12, US dollars per capita. Mm -hmm. So our estimate is we should be able to reach at least uh, 11,000 US dollars mm -hmm. per capita, US dollars, in US dollars. Huh? So, uh, sino si, ano bang kailangan, uh, I mean, to, uh, to wrap this interview, uh, ano mga kailangan na gawin para ma-attain natin itong mga ito? Uh, how, uh, who should act? Well, uh, well uh, the government is, uh, should act. Uh, there should be cooperation from the private sector. And, uh, you know, the private sector should be doing what it should be doing. The government should, uh, in terms of uh, investments and uh, economic activity, and the government should be providing the environment, the environment that is conducive to economic activity. And then citizens are uh, united. If we are united, if there's unity, then, uh, and then there's uh, trust among uh, people, among themselves, as well as uh, with uh, uh, relative to government, uh, trust uh, towards government and towards uh, business and uh, corruption is uh, at a minimum, then I think uh, the, we, we should be in uh, a much better position. And I would want to uh, live in a Philippines like that. That's correct. So and P uh, OFWs should be coming home in droves mm -hmm. and there will be no more OFWs, mm -hmm. like Korea and Thailand. They used to have several uh, overseas workers, Korea and Thailand, but that was only in the mm. 70s yata and 80s. After that, wala na, mm. because they were able to grow their economy mm. to the satisfaction of uh, the citizenry mm. people. Yeah. Oh, sana nga, oh. Thank you very much, Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Ernesto Pernia, and I am Ralph Rivas. Thanks for watching.